Welcome to Make Something with me, David Picciuto, and today we are going to make a simple wooden mallet. Check it. Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. Today, we're gonna make a mallet. We're not gonna do anything fancy. We're not gonna do a bunch of combinations of woods. We're not going to use exotic wood like I've used in the past. We're just going to use some walnuts. We're not going to complicate it by throwing in BBs to make it a dead blow hammer. We're just going to make a simple mallet. Pachudo, you've made one before. You got the MC Hammer Hammer. I made that maybe six, seven years ago. And it used to have a piece of leather on here, which recently came off. And this is made out of uh, some sort of coconut palm. Coconut palm. And uh, as you can see, the end grain, you know, it, uh, it comes apart. It's, this one has served its purpose. It's time to move on. So I'm just going to make a simple mallet. That's the, that's the piece of wood I want right there. Unfortunately, it's underneath all of that. Can I show you something while we're in here? My grandpa gave me some wood. He's like, you have some use for this? Yeah, I'll take it. I'm like, what kind of wood is that? And he goes, that is walnut. I was like, what? That's the sap wood of walnut. He gave me a couple more pieces. And like, there's, there's the, the, you know, what you think of walnut? This is all the sap wood. And it's this beautiful, brilliant, almost white. So. This has nothing to do with today's project, but I need to do something with this walnut sap wood. I think that would be really cool. Anyway, I am easily distracted. I got to get this mother piece out. It wasn't as hard as I thought. So this is a piece of walnut uh, that came from a live slab that I had. Duh. I don't remember what I made with that. It's maybe a bench, but it's been sitting in the closet for a long time. It is definitely not flat. And then there are some checks in here. So I think the first thing I want to do is like, I want to plane this down uh, to see what the grain's going to look like and to see what pieces are good, but it's got a little wobble. So we have to use my, my planer jig because we don't have a joiner that's that big. Nobody does. So this is my sled. I throw my chunk on top of that. I find where the wobble is and I throw in this wedge. It's got sandpaper on there. This whole thing is got grippy sandpaper. Make sure that wobble is out. And then I can take this over to the planer. So once you get one side flat, then you do, ah, fucking fuck. So like I was saying, once you get one side flat, then you don't need to sled anymore and you can flip this over and do the other side. There's going to be a lot of people with some bad attitudes saying, I don't have access to big two inch thick walnut and a big old planer. That's okay. You don't have to have that stuff. You could just go get some three quarter inch wood from wherever you get it and just glue it together. This is an inch and a half. So that would be two three quarter inch thick boards Duh. glued together. That's all you need. So using the same sled that we used in the joiner, I'm going to put a straight edge on here. As you can see, there is no straight edge. So I can't run this up against my fence safely but this has some grippy tape on there. And then I have this board, this sled running up against my fence. I just have this overhang a little bit and then we will run this through and then I have a nice straight edge that I can use against my fence. So now that we have a nice clean edge on there, we can flip this over, run that clean edge up against the fence. I've now moved my fence over to two inches and we're gonna cut some strips out of here there's not a lot of usable pieces here. You can see there's a huge check there. That's going to break off bunch down here, but uh, I don't know. We'll figure it out. We can get at least one, two, maybe three out of this. We'll see. For the hammer head, I'm going to cut this angle right here. And the angle that I used before seemed to be the right angle. So I'm just using who knows what this is called. Probably doesn't even have a name. 
Let me grab the, the angle off of there. 80 degrees. So I got my miter gauge. I'm just going to set it to 80 degrees. It doesn't have to be perfect. Get over yourself. That looks good. Oh, I got to get that perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. I grabbed the measurement off the bottom there. Then I marked that on there. That cut made a kerf into my thing, whatever. This probably has a name, but I don't remember what it's called. I can line that mark up with that kerf cut. I can also, if I want to repeat this, I can move my fence over. I don't want my fence actually touching the piece, so I put a spacer in there. And then I can just line that up right there. Remove that. So now I need to drill a hole in the top here. Always keep your eye on the piece. You got to come up for air. So we have a few of these made. We rounded over all the corners so it has a nice feel to it. One of these still has some cracks and checks in there. I'll keep that one for myself and it'll probably break and it'll probably be frustrating and it'll probably make for great YouTube content. So now it's time to make the handle and we're going to do this on the lathe. I prefer the round ones instead of the square ones with the rounded over edges. It's a little bit more work, but the, but the effort is worth it. So it's time to cut some square stock. Hopefully there's still some good pieces in here. So we still got, yeah, that, that, that freaking hurts. And then what do you call that, Dan? What is, what is that? This one has some fish gills in there. We'll try to avoid the fish gills. It has some checks and cracks in there. There's at least one handle right, right there. Maybe two out of this one, depending on how deep they go. There's another handle here. We might have to make a trip to Kencraft to go get some more wood. So, but the first thing I want to do is cut a, uh, a square for the circle. I'm just going to cut off some 45s on the corner here. That's just going to save me some lathe time and make less of a mess. We are now going to use the lathe to turn the handles. You've all seen how the lathe works. You know what the lathe does. So Dan and I are going to go into spaceship mode for the next couple minutes. Pull that off the lathe and now we need to cut that to length. We're also going to cut a slot in there so we could ram a wedge.
So now we've got everything all sanded. We got our, our wedge made and uh, we'll just drown it in some glue here. Oh yeah. Oh. And then we'll throw in a little glue up here. Is there glue on my mustache? We can now uh, pound our wedge in. Right now, pound sounds like a funny word. You're gonna have to borrow a mallet from a neighbor or a friend. That's nice and solid. We can wipe all the off of here. I have a, a couple little, these couple little gaps. No big, no big deal. You don't have to worry about it. It's something that I worry about. So we're just gonna put a little glue on there. Grab a little S dust. Make something logo on one side, and uh, we'll flip it over and put something fun on the other side. Whoa, that's way too much, dude. Oh, look at that, that looks great. While we are putting some finish on this guy, I would like to tell you about today's sponsor, and that is Squarespace. I've been using Squarespace for years, even before I did the YouTube thing. I used to be a web developer. It's a lot of work. Squarespace takes care of all of that. You can set up a store where you can sell physical items. You can even sell digital items such as music, uh, PDFs. I sell plans of some of the projects that I make and you can do point of sale purchases. If you're at a craft show, you can actually take a sale on your phone through the Squarespace app, which makes it really cool. If you wanna build a community around your website and have a password protected area, you can do that with Squarespace. You can see it right there, it's a little lighter, which means I got some glue on there. And usually what I do is I just kind of take a piece of sandpaper and just kind of sand and then there, all gone, all better. We all have crazy social medias. We are on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and all of that. And you can bring all of those feeds into your Squarespace site. So you have one central place for all of your, you've got one central place for your digital lifestyle. What does that mean, digital lifestyle? We are almost done, we'll, we'll wipe off all the excess here. So, visit squarespace.com and when you're ready to launch, visit squarespace.com slash make something for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So now what we need to do is wipe off the excess. You let it sit a little bit and then I think I'm going to glue on some little leather pads on the side there. That walnut is just beautiful. Now, I think typically you might have, oh, another little spot. I think typically you might use a heavier wood when making a mallet, maybe something like a maple. I think this would be fine for my purposes. Uh, you know, it is what it is. If I need a heavier mallet, I'll just make a heavier mallet. I am going to make a few extra and I will have them for sale on my website at makesomething.com. Yeah, we'll probably put the Make Something logo on there. Why not? Why not? It's my choice. You don't want, you don't want the logo on there? Sand it off. We're going to put some leather on there. I think just on one side. I'll leave one side wood, one side leather. We're just mixing up some four minute epoxy here. Don't get it on your fingers. It will kill you. Use an application brush. Can't see or lint free. Can't, it's hard to read. It's covered with oil. I think we can use one of these. I don't care about conditioning the leather. This is just mostly darkening it up so it looks better to my eye. That is going to wrap it up. Like I mentioned before, I'll have a few of these for sale on my store. If it says sold out, come back and check in a few weeks. Maybe I'll have time to make some more. It's just one of those things, as I have time, I'll make more. You, there's absolutely no reason to email me asking me when I'm gonna put more up there. Cause I'm gonna say, I don't know. I also, we've got new hats 
and some new shirts. This is a new shirt. This is the design that we're currently working on for the workbench. It's drying, it's full of epoxy. We've also got books for sale, the bandsaw box book, the make your own cutting boards book, and the brand new book, Hot Off the Presses, Make Your Own Kitchen Tools. That is gonna wrap it up. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. We will see you next week with a brand new video. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something. It's time to do some sexy shots. You always gotta end the video with some sexy shots. <laughs>